Welcome back to Stace on Wheels. This episode is all about Trixie's firewall and the dramas in trying to get the KBS rust seal to work. Spoiler alert, it didn't work out all that well, uh, but at the end of the video, I'll explain how I'm going to fix it. Next for the HZ1 tonner is the firewall and underneath the floor. What I'm going to do is strip all of this um, paint off. I don't think there's any rust problems here, but you never know until you start stripping the paint off. And I'm going to give it uh, a KBS treatment as well. Um, having learned from doing inside the floor, the best way to apply this so that it doesn't get runs and paintbrush marks in it, I'm going to have a go at doing it on the firewall and worst case is I just have to sand it back a little bit and, and then just paint it with whatever I, I use on the inner guards and um, anywhere else in the engine bay that needs to be black. As for underneath the floor, Trixie has to get flipped on her back for that and that's imminent but I just figured I'd have better access to the firewall while she's upright. So that's the plan today, strip the firewall back uh, and get that ready uh, for KBS. That's all the grinding I'm getting done today because I've used up all my batteries. But it is actually in really, really good condition. I think I did pick up a little bit of uh, surface rust in there, but it just kind of melted away and that's just beautiful shiny metal. It looked a bit like that. And once that's uh, stripped off, it, uh, it just comes back to perfect look looking metal, which is great. So I don't think there's going to be any repairs needed to the firewall at all. It's just a question of grinding all that old stuff off and then um, KBSing it to protect it. If I don't like the KBS finish on the firewall, because I think it really has to look fantastic, I am going to just lightly sand the KBS back, uh, just so it's still protecting the metal, uh, and then um, paint it with whatever black paint I use on the inner guards. I have nearly finished grinding the firewall. I'm just doing really around all the seams. We've got most of the bottom seam done. Uh, a little over half the top seam done, but about here is where it starts getting a, a little bit more difficult uh, with a little bit of extra surface rust there. But just down here, um, and, and it has been like this in a lot of other places, it's really thick. But when I get right down into the layers, I'm sure I can see something that looks like Palais White, but I have no idea if the firewalls came out of the factory in the body color or if they were painted black or if they were, there was a choice, I really don't know. But it looks like some kind of white underneath the black and then underneath the white, I'm pretty sure I'm seeing um, a red, the red oxide primer. I'll probably save these bits, everything under the seam um, for when I flip her on her back because I think that that seam's going to do a good job of stopping uh, any runoff going inside the cab. So down this side seam, I've already done this on the other side, but there's obviously seam sealer between the actual firewall um, sheet and the body and what I'm imagining is that if I only grind to the edge of the firewall panel and then KBS that, when I come to grind the body panel, I'm just going to damage what I do with the KBS. So I'm kind of going to grind a margin down the body panel, get rid of as much of that seam sealer as I can, uh, and then try to really clean out whatever part of that join I can manage. And then I'll be able to get a little bit of KBS maybe pressed into behind um, where that seam sealer is at the moment, I'm not sure. But anyway, more importantly, I just want to leave a margin there so that when I come to do the body, I'm not going to damage what will hopefully be the beautiful part. Firewall is now ready. So I have finished stripping all the paint off the firewall. There's no rust, 
there was a tiny bit of very, very light pitting just around one little corner of where the heater box goes on. The rest of the metal is pretty much pristine. And as I've said before, my plan is to use KBS on the firewall, but I had to second guess myself after I read uh, a Facebook group post where somebody was asking about using, I think it's that, that phosphoric acid treatment for rusty metal uh, before he went ahead and, and primed and painted the panel. And because there was no rust on the panel that he was working on, a lot of the comments said, don't use that, don't use that kind of rust treatment on perfect metal. So I thought, well, KBS is a rust treatment, so maybe I shouldn't be using it on bare metal. Anyway, I rang KBS and I spoke to um, Adrian, great guy, very informative, he could almost read my mind, but when I explained the situation that the firewall really had no rust, he said, absolutely still go ahead and do it. And I, I kind of gathered that the rationale being that the step two, the rust blast, it's not just for treating any surface rust or um, leftover rust that's in the metal, it's also for etching the metal so that the rust seal can bond to it. And it's really the rust seal that I'm interested in for the firewall and also for the underside of the floor if it, it turns out to be in as good condition as the firewall. I just want to protect the metal uh, and the rust seal is, is made for that. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to go right ahead and use the rust blast on the firewall and think about it more as an etching process for the rust seal uh, to bond to. So if you saw my video on using KBS on the floor inside and under the dash, you'll know I wasn't really happy with the finished product and that was more a case of my technique as it turns out rather than the actual product itself. Uh, so I am keen to improve my technique and master the use of KBS. I don't think it's going to take much effort, like there were just a couple of things that I, I didn't do right and when I spoke to Adrian about using it on perfectly good metal, another thing he let me know was that the satin finish that I got in the rust seal is a little bit harder to apply. It works a lot better spray painting it on rather than using a brush. Uh, there's something about the whatever the, the product is they put in to make it satin black as opposed to a gloss black. It makes it film up a little bit quicker when you're applying it. So if you go back over any anywhere you've, you've just freshly, almost freshly painted, uh, it's more likely to leave brush marks in it. Now when I did thin it uh, for the second coat inside the cab, it applied heaps better and I didn't get any brush strokes at all. Uh, my problem then was running, but I'm going to try to get um, kind of lighter coats, work a little bit more quickly and definitely try not to touch anything up. And I think it's going to be a lot easier here because it's such a small area compared to the entire floor pan or the entire um, under dash section. about doing this by hand yourself and not getting the cab blasted well there's more than one thing about it actually I've been reflecting on it a lot because getting the cab blasted and epoxy primed would have been far easier and much 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 quicker um, but I think I would have missed out on a few things I would have missed out on getting to know the cab quite intimately um, understanding what coatings it had on it where the paint was still original from the factory and where the rust was, mostly the surface rust because you've got no idea where the surface rust was really after it's been blasted. You can see where the pitting and the rust holes are but uh, not the surface rust and I think that's clues really about where there might have been leaks or which parts of the, the cab might be more susceptible to future um, I don't know, weather, um, weathering or uh, where, oh, I don't know, rain or water might get in and potentially 
make it rust again. It's like an archaeological dig. You, um, you're finding some of the history of, of the car when you're, you're doing everything hands-on. Anyway, I'm in no hurry. I bought this for a project, for something to, to do, without having to pressure myself to the deadlines and expectations. So there's the 10 minutes, time to wash it off. You can already see the metal starting to change color like it did inside. Sort of like a bit of a goldy tint to it in some places. Then you can hopefully see how the pitted area has gone quite dark. It's been about a week since I did the rust blast on the firewall and today is the first day I have had enough time to uh, get the rust seal done. And what I mean by that is what I learned from doing the inside of the cab was that I didn't leave enough drying time for the first coat. Uh, I think I left about two, two and a half hours and even though it, it didn't leave a fingerprint when I touched it, it still was too tacky, I guess, for the second coat to, to go on smoothly and hence ended up with, well, it's one of the reasons I ended up with brush marks. So I've learned that five or six hours is probably gonna be a lot better between the coats and it's kind of in the middle of the day on a Saturday and I'll get the first coat done and then this evening I'll come back and do the second coat and I am really hoping I end up with a better finish on this firewall. If I don't, doesn't really matter. Like I've said, I'll just um, sand it back a little bit make it smooth again and then probably just spray it with, uh, with whatever I spray the inner guards with. Now I'm not spraying this now because I'm down in this shed that doesn't have any power and I still have not found the right kind of generator and air compressor to run a spray gun. Um, that's going to be far more important of course when I paint the, um, the panels of the car, uh, but it's it, I just don't want to hold the project up waiting to, to figure out that solution, but I'm hopeful I'll find a solution and be able to, to do that um, down here in the Zed Shed, the powerless <laughs> Zed Shed. What I've done is tape up the edges, uh, kind of the edges. I wanted to leave a bit of a, a seam uh, around or a margin around the actual firewall panel itself so that um, I can in a way, use the KBS rust seal to seal up that gap, but also have a nice um, neat edge to bring the, um, the body color back to. So underneath the tape, there's still some bare metal. So when I come to take the paint off the body, I'm not going to have to risk uh, grinding into, into the KBS on the, on the firewall. So that tapes all the way around there. I wasn't sure whether at the top here I wanted to bring the KBS all the way up to that join um, to the cowl. I decided not to because Trixie did have the body colour go down underneath that lip and then the firewall black started really from that, that corner in there. Um, then obviously comes, comes down. <laughs> I, um, I'm not I'm not bothering to, to tape down here because uh, I will KBS this bottom seal, but then when I flip the cab on um, on its back, I'll, I'll keep grinding under here and I should be able to grind under there fairly safely without damaging the KBS that I've already got on the firewall. So yeah, all taped up and ready for me to start mixing up the rust seal. It's been a week since I did the first coat of the rust seal on the firewall and the reason for that is I got the same problem I had inside the cab which is runs and brush marks and I could not figure out how to control them. 
I might have spent a few days feeling a bit sorry for myself and despondent about it, but I did end up watching um, one of the videos I took when I was talking about the plan for the firewall and I reminded myself that the plan was I would just sand out those brush marks and drips and put another coat on, no doubt to sand out the brush marks and drips from that second coat as well and then I can coat it with whatever I want to later on. And later on, um, hopefully I'll have figured out what generator and compressor I need to get so that I can spray paint. And I think that's gonna um, create a benef better finish with, with whatever paint um, or coatings that I use on the rest of this project. So today's plan, sand these um, drips and brush marks out. So that's all sanded back now. I used a combination of 400 grit. That's what I used for most of the flat surfaces that didn't really have any brush marks or drips, just to scuff it up ready for the second rust seal coat. Uh, but I did need the 240 grit to really get into those, um, those drips and eat them away. You can still see some shadows of them there, but when I run my finger over them, I can't feel anything. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's a firewall after all, it's not like a body panel. I did try using the sanding block, um, just a cork, cork block, but really none of this firewall is really flat. So wherever I was using uh, the block, I was uh, rubbing away back to bare metal just because there, well, just isn't a flat surface anywhere. So yeah, just uh, trusted my fingers to feel the way. I'm not really sure what to clean this off with. I'm just going to use the Aqua Clean, which was the first step of the KBS. Um, maybe that'll do. Um, wash it off with water, let it dry, and then try again. Here we go for round two. I know it's going to run, and I know I'm going to get brush marks, and I know I'm going to have to sand it back again. But I just have to get stuck into it. So that's the second coat of the rust seal done. Um, I used a fresh can of paint. I used a higher quality paintbrush and I still tried to keep working fairly efficiently and not uh, taking too long so that if I had to go back over anywhere, it would just um, uh, cause more brush marks because it tacks up so quickly. I'm not sure that any of that made any difference, to be honest. If there was one request I have of KBS coatings with the Rust Seal product is to somehow formulate it so it just doesn't set up so quickly. If you're going to get runs, the runs don't happen straight away. They happen a little bit afterwards when you've started painting another area. So if you go back and try and clean up the runs, it's already tacky. So then you get brush marks uh, and, a, and a different kind of, um, you know, a duller sheen on the finish. So I don't know, I don't know that I could have done anything differently in my technique to, to make this work, with a brush anyway. So it's a case of sanding out the drip marks again and the brush marks again. And whether I do a third coat of rust seal or not, I'm not really sure. Uh, that's because with the first coat, when I sanded it back, I came back to bare metal again. So I think it, it really it really needs two coats everywhere, so I may have to do a third coat. But I reckon I'll be uh, going back to plan B, which is to, um, to then sand it again and have it ready to be uh, coated with, with whatever paint I use um, in the rest of the engine bay, like the inner guards. But the cab is ready to flip on its back and for me to start grinding away at the underside of the floor. Um, I'll strip off whatever's there, look for any, any rust damage. I doubt I'm gonna find any, to be honest, because uh, I haven't found any anywhere else yet in this car. Um, and I'm hoping that by the time I'm ready to coat the underside of the floor, I will have figured out the, um, the generator and the air compressor that I need to get to use a spray gun. I'm hoping that the rust seal will go on better with a spray gun. Um, I don't know yet. Uh, I guess we're going to find out. But in any case, uh, I know the firewall is now protected and I can at least move on to the next stage and get closer to what I hope will be the fun bit, which is working on the body and, uh, and the, you know, the, the bonnet, the doors, the guards, 
uh, all of that stuff. And I'm hoping that spray painting those things will be uh, a lot easier than working with the rust seal. Anyway, in time, we're going to find out. So I'm sorry, this hasn't been a very optimistic episode, has it? <laughs> it's just part of the journey, you know, like um, not everything has to go right. Not everything is going to go right. And you don't learn unless you have struggles and make mistakes. <laughs>